Hi, welcome to the Wardenberg Family Farm. We have a special guest today. Hi, I'm Chloe Wardenberg, and today we are going to be turning this icky old beeswax into a beautiful bar. Hopefully. <laughs> Join us and see what happens. All right, so the first step is to take this bag full of disgusting stuff. It's gross, isn't it? Yeah, I can't believe that that turns into this. Oh, well, hopefully it will by the end of the show. So we take this and we're going to put it in boiling water and the wax will actually melt. And what will happen is the wax is lighter than water, so the wax should flow to the surface of the water and then any water, honey, and other stuff should be on the bottom. One. And when I pull the bag out after it melts, what's in the bag should be the stuff that we don't want. The propolis, the dirt, the bee parts, whatever <laughs> might be in there that we don't want in our wax. So. It's pretty disgusting at this point, but hopefully it'll come out beautiful. Donnie took over for a while because that bag gets awfully heavy. But it's getting lighter. See the mass of the wax. The bees is melting. wax melts out and the honey melts out of the bag. What's it looking like in there? Well, the beeswax actually beginning to stick on the pan. Yeah. The yeah. residue. This is exciting. Now we just have to learn how to make beeswax candles. Keep up the good work, Ansem. Yeah. Well, as you can see, the bag is almost empty. I think it's mostly just waste and residue in there. Unfortunately, when I pulled it out, I can see that there's um, good wax drying on the bag. So I'm gonna save it and dip it in some fresh hot water just to clean off all of the, uh, the good wax. But we're going to take this outside now, let it cool down, and we should have a, a nice layer on the top of clean beeswax. All right, so now it's a matter of taking the hardened wax out of there, put it in the crock pot, which has a, another drain, a strainer. What's that? Is that actually a paint strainer? Yes. That will put it in and melt it again and hopefully get more impurities because you can see there's still some stuff in it. It's not pure yet. So what do you think it looks better? Yeah. Better than it did? I don't know how much we're going to get. We'll see. You know, at the bottom, look at the funky bottom. Oh, about to drop it. <laughs> now that is a old crock pot that's yeah, dedicated to... Yeah, it's only to, used for this. Yeah. But I want to get all that was on the side of the pot. I want to get every little bit of wax. Nice. Whoops. Oop. I got it. Fumble. Not beautiful yet, huh? It'll get there. Oh, look at that one. Mm-hmm. Okay. How come beeswax is yellow? Boy, I don't know. I'll have to research that. Is it because of the pollen they use to do it all? Put in the comments if you know why beeswax is yellow. Yeah. Anybody know? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a school research project, Chloe. Yeah. Oh boy, not another one. Somebody in high school could research that. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> you don't care about it that much, huh? Yeah. Now I want to get the stuff off the sides and get every drop of wax. This could be interesting. I wonder if I should dump everything else out and then get the stuff off the sides. Maybe. But there's yeah, still some wax. The water out. There's still some wax down in there. I want to try to... The I guess we got most of it. All right, so we'll dump the water somewhere outside where it doesn't matter and then scrape all the stuff off the sides and start the next step. There we go. All right, I'm going to get a scrape out well, the we'll, we'll take it inside and I'll get a picture of how much wax is in the filter. It's worth something. It's like uh, scrambled eggs. Yeah, no. <laughs> Want to eat it? <laughs> <laughs> this is why it's important to have a dedicated pot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> never going to get all that out. Okay. 
Well, our cute helper had to go home, so Mima and Pop Pop are gonna have to finish this now. <laughs> we miss Chloe. So we have it doing its second filtering. It's in the crock pot in another mesh bag. And if you look, it's starting to melt. Part of it's completely melted and some of it's, it's all getting soft. So pretty soon it'll all be nice and runny. And we'll pull the bag out and pull some more yeah. gunk out. Yeah. Okay, some liquid now. What do you have the gun there? Yeah, this is the gun that tells the temperature. And if I shine it on a hard part, it's 133. If I shine it on the melted part, that's 158. So, okay. put the lid back on and get the rest to melt. And then we'll see how, how pure it is once we do the second filtering. I'm excited and I can't wait to make candles. That's the fun part. So, melt. Well, it's all melted and probably a little hotter than it should be. We kind of forgot about it. We were doing other projects. So, here's what came out of the second filtering. Still some crud in there, huh? But if it still has impurities, we're gonna put it through like a muslin or you know, a t-shirt or something like that to get the final little bit of impurities so it's perfectly pure. Okay, now that we took a closer look at the uh, melted wax, it looks pretty clean. So we're just gonna run it through one more filter uh, as we pour it into the mold. And there's a mold underneath here. So I'm gonna pour it out and then we'll pull the filter cloth up and then we'll put it outside and it's only about 35 degrees outside. And then I think we'll have a nice mold. Let's see how full it gets here. I think we got it all. Okay. Now, I'm going to slowly pull it up and it'll filter its way through. And it's a, just a t an old t-shirt that we cut up. And I think this will do the trick. And we will have some residue. I can see it inside there. But I think this is going to be pretty nice. And clean. Nice and clean. We're just about done here. We have a nice little block there. It is. And it's surprising the amount of residue that's still in here. So once it's done, I'll come back here and show you what, what we have. Oops, I drizzled out the side. it's going to pop out now. Oh, just a little bit of water. Look at that. Beautiful, pure yeah. beeswax. A little mm -hmm. bit of water in it. That there. has water that has uh, honey. a little bit of honey in it, but we'll get rid of that. Look at that beautiful beeswax. Yeah. Hey, let's ask the authority. Hey Google, why is beeswax yellow? Sorry, I don't know why that is, but I found something else. Do you want to know why is my beeswax so yellow? Yes. Sorry, I don't know why that is, but I found something similar. Do you want to know why is my beeswax yellow? No. You ready to make candles? I am ready. We've never done it before, but I'm ready. We're going to have a good time today? I hope so. All right, we are gonna turn this beautiful beeswax that we rendered into hopefully beautiful candles. So, I um, think we have everything we need. We got a weigh-in to start? Yeah, we have a scale to weigh it. I'm gonna weigh the wax. We have our jars, we have our wicks, we have our melting. I think we have everything we need. So yeah, let's weigh that and see how much it is. Including the knowledge of how to do this? No, that, that we're gonna to have to wing it. <laughs> Okay, so let's Just see. Just put it all in there. It's on all, zero. All yep. of them at once? Okay. Let's see what we got total. This is just a normal kitchen scale. Okay, two pounds, four ounces. So just over two pounds. Okay. So now we got to get that 
in this pot. Awesome. Are well, you going to try to do half of it at once or just do all of it? I'm going to do all of it at once. Okay. We'll see if this breaks. How strong are you? Ooh, oh. look at that. I don't know about that. <laughs> that was nope. great. We've okay. watched some people that actually shred it first and then put it in the pot, but it ended up melting and just turning into a glob anyway. So we're doing it in one piece or two pieces. So we'll see. Hopefully it'll work. Try not to cut my uh, hand off on, on the video here. That'd be good. I don't know if this one will break. You want to do it on film. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know if we can get it over there. Maybe no, we can just do just that. Go with that. So that's probably just a little over one pound. So now okay. we put this, which actually I was going to use this. But to be honest, I bought this on Amazon the other day. I thought it was bigger. <laughs> so this is going to be my double boiler. I'll have boiling water in here. This will be on top, melting. And then I'll pour it in here before I try to pour so the candle. So this will be our dedicated wax candle thing. Pot. And this, it, it can be for now, but all I use it for is to hang on the wall downstairs in my larder. So if it gets wax on the inside, we can't get out. So it's a functional decoration? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> well, probably all decorations. Most decorations are somewhat functional. That's true. Or That's antiques. True. They were used for something at one point. All right. So now we'll turn this on to boiling and get this going and see how long it takes to, well, to melt. All right. Give it a go. All right, well it's been about 15 minutes and we were able to put that second block of big book block of wax in there. And it's just about there. Now, we watched a lot of YouTube videos and a lot of them said to warm the jars before you pour them so they don't crack. So I'm gonna try it with some of them and some I'm not going to. I kinda wanna see if it actually does make a difference. So I'm just gonna put five of them in the oven on keep warm. So they'll be warm when we pour them. Because our house is fairly chilly like 67, 68. That's chilly to me. So we'll get them a little bit warm. But I think it's going to be melted in about five minutes. It, I wish I could send smell through this camera because it smells amazing. It smells like honey. All right, it's pretty much melted. Now, one thing I did see a lot of YouTubers say they put in coconut oil. Most of them put in like a quarter cup per pound. They say it helps it burn more evenly and burn longer. So I'll take them at the word on that one. Plus I like the smell of coconut oil, so it can't hurt. So we have two pounds. This is approximately a half a cup. Remember, I don't measure things very well. So let's get that melted in there. And I have my jars still in the oven on warm. Yeah, it's going to melt pretty fast. And then we wait till the wax is roughly 150 to 160 degrees. That's when we pour it in the jars. It's about 200 now. It'll cool down. Isn't that beautiful? Mm-hmm. That's just beautiful. All right, the wax is cooling, so it's time to get the jars out and get the wicks in place. They're not hot, they're just nice and warm. Now, when you buy wicks, usually they'll come with these little sticky things. You peel the paper off, attach the wick, and it's sticky on this side too. And I'll just sit that down in the jar. Whoops, <laughs> not there. In the middle and push it into place. And those are just cotton wicks? Yes, they're cotton wicks. They're not supposed to have a metal core or anything. Yeah, and they have like a wax or something to make them uh, stiff so that the wick stands up without really being uh, supported at the top. They sell actually things to hold it at the top, but I want to see what happens without it. I might regret it, but we'll find out. You can always bump them over. I would think. All right, I'm gonna to attempt to pour this, this wax into our pouring jar 
And we'll see how smoothly that goes, how much of it lands in the pot versus on the wax. Oops. Not well, so smooth. Not so smooth. I guess I'll get the merits for that. Well, it's good you had the paper down. Okay, now I'm going to try to... And you want to get the wick okay. sticking up? Yep. We think we have an ingenious way to keep the wicks up. <laughs> we'll see. I don't think it's sitting on the bottom, I don't know. Oh. Come loose. It seemed like it floated. Okay. Huh? We'll have to work on this. <laughs> All right, so we learned a few things. It's hard to pour from there into here. And also, the little sticky things that are supposed to hold the wicks on the bottom don't. As soon as the hot wax hit them, they started floating around. They did not stick. So we had to get creative and quick, get the wicks in place and hold them there until they dried enough to stay. Let's see, what, what do you got? And see, now look, they're all staying. They just have to hold for a couple of minutes and what then they stay. Yeah. But now I have to decide, do I want to put any scents in the next ones? I don't know. But now we got to get it all melted again. One thing, if you're bark pouring wax and you spill it, don't worry about it. It just lifts right off put it right in the pot and melt it. So as long as you have something to catch it, you're fine. Guess that cut me out of the doghouse. You wouldn't have been in the doghouse because I already, I already dropped wax on the island. <laughs> so I'm in the doghouse. So we'll get that melted back up again to the right temperature and we'll pour the rest. Should I put scent in them or not? Okay, I'm gonna experiment with the last three and put some blend of vanilla in there. And a lot of them say an ounce per pound, an ounce of oil per pound of wax. That's a lot. I think there's about a half an ounce left in here. So I'm not even gonna use all that. I would like a very subtle fragrance. I don't like it super, super smelly. Okay, are you gonna pour this time? Wish me luck. Yeah. Okay. Well, I spilled it last time, so this is your chance. Okay. I don't wanna get on my pot holder though. I like my pot holder. It's easier when it's not as full, dear, so. Okay. Oh, well, you're kind to do that, to give me an out. I get the uh, easy part. All right, now, we are gonna use the one metal wick holder that came with the kit. All right, and then let's see it close up here. Donnie quickly made some wooden ones. Now, I'm gonna try to start pouring these. Okay. See if that holds the wicks in place. And I did melt some wax on the bottom to supposedly hold the bottom in place. Oh, there's gonna be a little too much. Now you're not supposed to pour once you stop. I'll break a roll. There, I broke a roll. Should I break it again? See what happens. Okay. Okay. We have six candles poured. Awesome. So we'll let them cure a while. I, some people say an hour, some people say three days. <laughs> so we'll go somewhere in between there. Let them harden, let them cool. Show you how they look. And maybe we even light them, see if we smell anything. So, wow, we have candles. How exciting. That was fun today, wasn't it? It was fun. Yeah, it was a good day. We learned a lot too. We did learn a lot, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Great outcome. Thanks for being kind when I spilled the wax. Well, I always make messes. You're kind to me. <laughs> always. So, I love having the candles. Yeah, they're terrific. Which one's scented and which one's not? This one's vanilla, this one's not. So I wonder in the end, I'm gonna be curious to see if you think it's worth it putting the essentials oils right in the wax or I don't not. know. I'm thinking it might be better to just go ahead and put oils in a diffuser and just leave the candles unscented. Yeah. I don't know, I'll know over time after I burn it for a while, but that's my gut instinct. Kombucha is terrific. <laughs> Grapefruit kombucha. We haven't, we haven't done any videos on that, have we? Not yet, no. Or John? John. Starting a new thing. <laughs> um, mm. So what did you learn today? I learned that the wax heated faster 
and it cooled faster than yeah. what I expected. Yeah, I thought it would take a long time to melt, and it didn't take that long. Yeah. I also learned a better way to break the blocks. Remember that? I couldn't break the one. Yeah. I just took it out in the front porch and right on the side of the concrete steps, and they broke up easy. Probably helped that the concrete steps were 35 degrees. When I get older, i got to use this more than this. There than you this. go. That makes sense. <laughs> So, and yeah. I learned don't trust those little sticky things to hold the wick on the bottom. Yeah. I think I would always put a little bit of wax on the bottom to set the wick in and make sure it's secure before you pour the candle. And you need the uh, guide on the top. We need wick holders on the top. Yeah. I thought we could get away without it. So, I don't know. They, he said they were expensive to buy, but you can get like 20 of them for $7 on Amazon. So, I'll have to see if I want to use metal or wood. I can make wood ones for about 10 cents. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. I'll figure that one out the next batch. But I know the next time we yeah. do honey, I'm going to be as excited about the wax as I am the honey. <laughs> yeah. And we know some other people who who spin honey, but they don't keep the wax. They never did anything with the wax and they throw it out. So yeah. I think next time they'll be saving it for us. Absolutely. And if anybody out there has wax from beehives laying around, let us know. Could, We'd love it. On Amazon, these are like 20 or $25 each. Yeah, but yeah, I didn't realize beeswax candles are really expensive. Yeah. So we have a lot of money sitting right here on the island. Well, you know, I read if it's good enough for the kings and queens over the last thousand years, it's probably good enough for us. I think it's perfect for the Wardenburg family farm. Yeah, another great day, Brenda. It is. So we'll see you on our next video. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.